This morning, I want to speak to you on the topic learn to be at peace with people the mystery of human relationships learn to be at peace with all people the mystery of human relationships and this morning I'm going to reveal to you eight spiritual symbolism of man why you need to value your human relationships amen read for me Romans chapter 12 verse 18 the book of Romans chapter 12 the verse 18 uh -huh. I read if it is possible if it is possible as much as depends on you as much as it depends on you live peaceably with all men live at peace with all men as much as it depends on you do your best to live at peace with all men now listen to me carefully when God is speaking you open your spiritual ears to listen God has not speak in the air when God is speaking acknowledge who is speaking everything you see around you including yourself the life you are living in he is the orchestrator the founder of the life you are living so when by his wisdom he speaks you will open your ears to listen the wisdom of God is telling us by his word that if it depends and as it depends on you do your best to live at peace with all men now you need to ask yourself why is God interested in me living at peace with all men because there is something spiritually about man that you need to understand in order to live the life and the purpose he has assigned you on earth this world and the life you are living is a spiritual thing if you are just going to see it casually and naturally just by the things you see with your eyes you will run a race and turn back and realize you are empty You've come nowhere, you've gone nowhere. There is a reason to why Paul, by the wisdom and the spirit of God, is admonishing Christians, God's children, to do their best to live at peace with everyone. Believe me, one of the most difficult things on earth to do is to live with people. Humans. I would rather choose to live with animals than to live with people. Are you with me? I knew Adam had peace when he was all by himself with the animals. Humans, people, ah, you, you know, I know. We won't even look far. Start from your home. Your own family your own brothers and sisters just start from home how difficult it is to live with people it's not easy even God himself got tired in the book of Genesis 6 I regret even creating mankind I have tried to win him but still we are stubborn by our sinful nature it's not easy but there is a greater grace of blessing when you have come to learn how to live at peace with people 
as much as we are difficult to live with, as much as we are going to give you problems, problems, be ready. If you want to deal with us, be ready. Even God himself, we are giving him problems. How much more you? Be ready. But as much as we are full of problems, there is a treasure in a man that when you've come to the knowledge of God and by his wisdom to know how to live with him ah, your life will be blessed are you with me so this morning I want to reveal a revelation of this wisdom to you God wants us to love people that is the will of God Look at all that man we do all the time. The sins we commit. From history. From the beginning of time. Look at how sinful man has been all throughout. God could have given up on us a long time ago. But God still kept on coming for man. He still chose to love man. And we did not want him. God, by our actions, we were telling him to hell with you and your love. But God was like, whether to hell with my love or not, I'm still coming for you. I love you. What made God, despite all that we did, despite all that man we do, Still, he came for us. There is something in us that we have not realized yet. That love of God to the point that he has to come down on earth to die for us. That is why the Bible says even up until now, angels cannot understand why God had to lower himself to become dust a mere mortal the mechanism of angels and how they are huh. David said for you have made them with power the power and the spiritual exuberance that comes out of angels comparing you and an angel in power you can't, you, don't, you can't stand them. And this sort of people, even to go to God, to stand in the presence of God, the Bible says that they cover their faces. The glory of God is beyond them. It marvels angels that have been created in this level. Yet, God chose to come into a lower version man to die for these ones God Satan offended you there were angels that sinned against you you put them in hell man also offended you and you left your kingdom chose to become like them to save them hey you must understand certain mysteries what is in man that a whole God of the universe will come after the business of God is people God is after man he wants all men to be saved all men to come to him his heart beats for man. So when he finds a person who shares with him that spiritual sentiment, who loves people, mm, you have fallen into his grace. You have touched his heart. That is why he desires that you live at peace with all men. There are certain blessings that will come to you when you have come to love all men and to be at peace with all men. 
That is why the Bible says that when brothers and sisters come together in unity, there God commands his blessings. Are you with me now? There God commands his blessings. When people are one, when they are at peace, that sort of union, if you are a peacemaker, that sort of person, you command the blessings of God. We call something commanded blessing. It is only for those who live at peace with men. Are you with me now? So desire in your heart that Lord help me to love people the way you do. Give me the heart you have for men. Let me see what you see in man that despite what man does, you still love him. No matter what anybody does to you, love them beyond. Look to God. Let your love for people come from how much you love God. You cannot love a man without loving God. If you take your eyes away from God and you want to love me, look, I will break your heart, not your heart alone. I will break your legs. I will break by the time I am done with you you will never think of loving humans again are you with me? it's my nature it's my sinful nature I will lie to you I will disappoint you I'm not perfect that Romeo you want me to be for to you I cannot be that Romeo are you with me? oh love me baby do this for me baby baby back look I will just serve you food, breakfast in bed just three days. After the rest you sort your own self out. I will not be there to fill your comfort. That is who I am. I will come tell you things you want to hear. Whether they are from my heart or not. That is my fallen nature. Are you with me? So if you are not going to look at God and just by myself you want to love me like that, then expect pain. I will hurt you. And by my pets, I can change you from being a good person because of the pain I can inflict upon you by my nature. So you need to look at God and how much you love God, the love you receive from Him. Out of that, you look at people and you love them. You no longer love them for, because of them. You love them because of God. You've come to love God in a way that any person made in his image makes it easy for you to love them. Are you here, somebody? So this morning, I will give you some few keys. Tell your neighbor some few keys. So why must we learn to live at peace with all men? Eight spiritual symbolism of man in relation to his relationship. One, because people are keys. Man is a key. People are keys. Amen. People are what? Be very careful with the way you relate with people. Your fellow brother or sister is a key to a certain door in your life. You see, the way God designed life, the spirituality of life, is that you need to go through doors towards your final destination. Every one of us, as we are traveling on our journey in life, you have to go through spiritual doors. Amen. Those doors are set in your life to open you up to the next levels of your life. And do you know where God kept the keys. 
he made the man the key. So sometimes you will get to a certain door and it's not about praying in tongues that to open that door. The key for that door is not kabalabalabalaba. It is living right with the next man next to you. He is the key to that door. Are you here somebody? When you read Matthew 16, 19, Jesus told Peter, I will give you now the keys of the kingdom. As I have called you into my kingdom, now I will give you. By giving him the keys, it means he has made Peter a key to unlock spiritual treasures of the kingdom. Men are keys. You are a key. Are you with me? So how you relate with people, be very careful. Don't make for yourself more enemies. Whether you like it or not, people will hate you. Whether you like it or not, people will not like you. But that is okay. Let it not be your cause. That is their own choice. But to you, minimize making enemies. Don't be comfortable in extending or stretching yourself to be an enemy to people. The more that you make yourself an enemy out there, the more that people also become enemies to you, certain doors in your life will be kept locked. Are you here? So, that is why God is admonishing us. Do well to live at peace with every man. Paul says, as it depends on you, do your best. Because you may not know the struggles that you are going through. The next person might be the one to liberate you. To open that door for you to go through. He or she is the key. So if you are on good terms with me, if we are relating well, it will not be difficult for me to help you. It will not be difficult for me to allow myself to unlock the door that you need to go through to your next level. I will be there to open that door for you. Are you with me now? So see humans as keys to doors of your life. Tell yourself, I am a key. I am a key. Oh yes. The next one is that you are also a door. Hey! Hmm. <laughs> the, the, the mysteries of God, eh? After he has made man a key, he also made man a door. Keys are lock. But a door gives access a way through. Are you with me? It gives access and a way through. Look, if you want to extend to your next level, sometimes you need to pass through certain people. God has made men doors. You see, your next promotion before it comes, sometimes you need to go through the door of serving another man. The door of submitting to another person. The door of relating well with another person. Though not only can the door be locked, but that very door also can be a person. You go through, you come in. The way we treat a door is just the same way humans are. So if you become my enemy, I can choose to close the pathway for you as a door in your life. Are you with me now? The same way as a door serves also as, as a physical security. The same way people are spiritually. So learn to be at peace with everyone. Try not to increase offenses. 
Jesus said in the book of Luke 17, offenses will come. But woe to the person through whom those offenses come. Whether you like it or not, they will come. But don't be the person through whom these things multiply. Are you with me now? You hurt your own self. When you go about making enemies, you hurt your own self. Because the way God designed life, no one is independent. No one is self-sufficient. Only God. God is the one who does not need any man or any person to live. He lived countless of times in eternity before he made creation. Before he even made angels. So God needs no one or nothing to live but you and every creation. He made us to depend on one another. We call it interdependency. Though God does not want you to overly depend on people, there should be a balance. You need to strike a sense of being by yourself and also the sense of knowing when you need people. There should be a balance. But what it is is that you need people. So because of how he structured life, you need to know how to live well with people many events of your life many things that will happen in, in your life do you think God just connected it to yourself he connected them to a lot of other people are you with me now so by now look to yourself and ask how is my relationship with people sometimes you have not got into certain level you have not got into certain places that God wants you to be because the connecting lines that he connected you with how you need to be with people, you are not doing your homework well. You're praying too much in the church and coming out to mess up the lines with your poor human relationship. So you need to understand, people are doors. That is why Jesus said that in the book of Matthew, he says something there, and even John, that I am the door by which my sheep enter. I am the door. So Jesus saying that in context is to salvation, but in physical context, he's speaking that man also is a door. Jesus is the door, but man is a door. Are you with me here? Are you with me? So he said, by me being a door, my sheep enter through so things can come through you as a door and those the door could stand for humans and people tell your neighbor relate well with people be nice to me tell your neighbor be nice to me amen because if you are bad to me you will suffer I will shut the door of your life. Amen. So sometimes when people tell you, my brother, I will make you I will make you suffer. Be careful. Please be careful. They really can. Don't be proud and think you can what can you do? What can you do? You may never know where the connecting lines of your life will, will end. Maybe it involves that very person that you are fighting with. Look, your enemy is not God's enemy. Let me punch that line into your, your spirit. If you hate someone, does it mean God hates that person? You sit there and think that because I don't like Mrs. Ola, God, th that woman, I don't like her. You know? And, ah, 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 ah. You not liking someone, does it mean God, like, God also doesn't like the person? You, are, you will be surprised that that very Mrs. Ola that you don't like in God's plan it is that same person that God has apportioned that she becomes your blessing are you here somebody if you are here put your hands together for Jesus the way you are looking at me is like pastor what are you saying I'm talking to you amen the next one is a tree man is a tree Jesus said that 
you shall know them by their fruit and a tree produces a good tree produces a good fruit please read this one for us read read so they don't say pastor is talking from his own mind open for us Luke chapter 43 verse 45 the book of Luke chapter the book of Luke chapter, chapter 6 verse 43 to 45 6 the verse 43 to 45 yes ma'am it says for a good tree does not bear bad fruit mm. nor does a bad tree bear good fruit mm -hmm. for every tree is known by its own fruit good for men do not gather figs from tongues mm. nor do they gather grape from the bramble bush mm. A good man out of the good treasures of his heart brings forth good. Mm. And an evil man out of the evil treasures of his heart brings forth evil. Mm. For out of the abundance of the heart, the, the mouth man speaks. Amen. So God has made a man, a person, a tree. Anytime you dream and you see a tree, you are not seeing anything different. You are seeing your own life there. You see, in the realms of the spirit, a tree represents someone's life. It could be yours or it could be whatever God is revealing to you about. That is why Jesus normally used a tree to talk about man's life. Now listen, because God has made man a tree, you see the benefits of a tree. Ask yourself why sometimes when people build houses and stuff around a place, they try to plant trees there because there is a benefit of trees around a place are you with me now so the way that we benefit from trees it is the same way that God has made people from the tree we can get fruit to eat from the tree we can get these things you are all sitting on and enjoying they are made from trees are you with me? The paper in the book and everything you are writing and everything is by the tree. So when you are despising people, when you are hating on man, you are blocking yourself from the blessings that come from how a tree is. Are you with me now? A tree produces many things. So the way that God has made people is that people out of their lives produce many things. And when you relate well with them, just as you go to a tree and you pluck, the same way that I can come to Elder Iman's life and pluck something. Because as much as he's a tree, God has destined him to bear fruit, produce. So the tree gives food same way another man can provide for you that satisfaction are you with me now learn to be at peace with everyone the blessings of God that we pray about all the time these are the channels that it works so you don't miss these blessings know how to work with God so you can receive what he has a portion for you are you with me the next one quickly men and people are path pathways a path man is a path when i say a path john 14 says, jesus said i am the way you see jesus is the way but we people a man is a way what do I mean by a way? The way the, 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 the way that we, we walk on a path, a path provides direction. Are you with me now? The person that you want to be, where you want to go, someone has been there before. A lot of times, the very person you hate is in the way, the same person that is the direction to your destination. The person that you are currently and fighting is the very person that God has designed to be the direction towards where you want to go. They say that if you want to succeed, 
be with people who, who are successful. Why? Because people are away. Look, when you want to know where you want to go, your dreams, your vision, realize that someone has been there. Someone too has become what you want to be. Are you with me? So you need to follow. So sometimes to get to where God wants you to be, follow. That is why God set authorities and leadership. Are you with me now? Now as myself being a pastor to you, the other time our Bible class online, I spoke about praying for long. The least is one hour. You see, maybe some of you here may not be praying one hour. It is not your habit. You have not gotten there yet. But me being a pastor, God has trained me to pray for several hours. Three hours, six hours, eight hours, sometimes 10 to 12 hours. I have been there. So for you to also become what God wants you to be, he put me, a man, before you as a path. Are you with me? So by following me as a path, you will also end up becoming what I have become by grace. That is why Paul told Timothy, follow me as I follow Christ. Are you with me now? So be careful with your human relationship. Be careful. The reason why I try not to make much enemies is I don't know the next person God has given the keys of my life, the door of my life. I don't know the next person that God has made a path or a way that I need to follow. Are you with me now? So don't fight it. Sometimes you see our elder succeed. That is a path. That is a direction. So when you fight a person like that, you fight the way to get to where he is. Are you with me now? And as much as we are talking about the good side, it also talks about the bad side too. When a person is a gangster, that is also a way. Following that path, you also end up being a gangster. Man, nigga. What's up, man? Hey! Hey, man. So be careful with how you deal with men. Hey, man. The next one, quickly. It's a bridge. Man is a bridge. A connector. Hey, man. God, God has made man a bridge. These are spiritual symbolisms of man concerning relationships with them. Man is a bridge. What is a bridge? A bridge covers and connects. Okay? Bridge helps us from one point to the other. There are certain times of life that, you see, you need to be connected. That is why there is this thing happening in society. We call it connections. Connections. Look, today, no matter how much you have gone to school and graduated with your degrees or whatever, you come back home and you realize, realize that 10 years you are still hunting for a job. And someone that just came out from school with certificate told the father, Daddy, I'm tired of degree. I just want the one, one year certificate or six months. And that person will come out and they connect the person in the job. You realize that after some time, the person who did not even go to school is working. And you that has gone through school and everything, you are still hunting for a job. The difference is that that one that did not go to school just got connected to something. Connections. Connections. Are you with me? People can connect you. God has made people connectors. Sometimes you may be struggling, but if you are on good terms with another brother or sister, they can connect you to the pathway that God wants you to go. Sometimes people have become who they are because of one or two people that connected them to certain things and certain people. And that was their breakthrough. Because I know something that will help you. I know a person that also knows a person that also knows another that can help you. Man is a bridge. So when you don't treat me well, I can connect you. Are you with me now? I can connect you. You see, 
recently I was looking for a plumber, a professional plumber. Not this household plumbers. I have to come and chop your money, but two days you see, you go and flash the thing again and the whole system and the pipe is out. Yeah, they, they took your money. I wanted a plumber for the church to come fix. Ah, so I was there. I've been, it's been almost a month. I have not gotten a, a, a professional plumber. And I don't know much around the place, Sanchiro. I stand inside. Then the Lord spoke to me and said, Remember the agent that gave you where you stay. Call her and ask her to give you the plumber. Hey. Then I said, oh, Mrs. Irene. But you see, Mrs. Irene, the agent, when I came for my, 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 my building, my flat, I was relating so well with her. One time she told me, Pastor, you are so kind, the way you talk to me. I said, don't worry. One day I'll reap this harvest. This, this, this thing that I'm doing. So, I, I reached out to her. That, Mrs. Irene, how are you? She said, I'm okay. Pastor, it's been long. I said, yeah. Uh, please, I need a little help, assistance. Do you know of any professional plumber, anyone that can help? I want our water closet at the church to be fixed. Then she said, oh, don't worry. I can give you the company's plumber. They are professional. It's, it's a company, it's a team. They can work and do it perfectly. I said, please drop the numbers. You see, something that almost a man, Sister Zipporah is there. We've been trying to look for, to the point that I even wanted to go online and check. I just consulted Mrs. Irene as the Holy Spirit asked me to do so. And it is done connect connections the plumber I needed I got it through Mrs. Irene who connected me to the plumber S simple bridges sit down there if you think I was not on good terms with Mrs. Irene she will mind me and even she added pastor please anything you need anything please ask me hey I said, don't worry, this is just the beginning. I'm warming you up. More will come, don't worry. <laughs> Amen. So, you see how this whole thing works. So, if you are not in good terms with people, the help that you need, you will not get. Be very careful how you relate with people. Did I know that a time will come that the very agent that is giving me the building, I will come back and need a plumber from her. I never thought about that. And from the beginning to when they were giving me the building, they were doing shakara. I could have gotten angry. Ah, I came to the building, there was a place that had broken. I told them, please. They said I should fix it with my money. I said, ah ah. Ah 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 ah. Amen. I can't fix this one with my money. Having paid deposit and all, you have drained me. So it was, she said, no. That is, it's, you have to do it. I said, I wasn't the one staying here. It's your duty. Then the Holy Spirit said, don't fight. Be quiet. I will give you the money for it. Then I said, Miss Irene, it's okay. It's okay, it's fine. And she said, oh, thank you, Pastor, for understanding. I, I said to myself, if you knew what to understand, the Holy Spirit just shut me up. Amen. As that went on. It's today that I've come back for asking for a plumber. Do you think if I, we had had that sort of thing, I could have come back for and she would have helped? No. So she connected me. Bridges. Tell your neighbor, I am a bridge. Tell your neighbor, I can connect you. You see, the problem you are going through, I am the connector. Tell your, your brother, I am the connector. If you know my numbers, call me. I will connect you. Connection man. <laughs> Amen. The last but three. Men are means of manifestation. Amen. When you read the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 7, the Bible says that it is given unto every man, every believer, the manifestation of the Spirit of God. 
Men are means by which we manifest. God manifests through men. Satan manifests also through men. You see, as you see me like that, I can manifest whatever thing that has to be manifested. If God wants to do something on earth, if God wants to reveal himself, he has to come through what? Man or use man. Are you with me now? So as a person that you are, you can manifest. So men are manifestors. So if you want to know God and you relate well with people, men can show you who God is. They can manifest God to you. The same way that if you don't live well with me and you become my enemy, I can manifest Satan to you. Are you with me now? Yeah. Satan also needs men to manifest. Are you with me now? So be very careful with your human relationships. Because people can manifest certain things. Are you with me now? The next, the last part one. Men are blessings and what? Curses. Men are blessings and they are what? Curses. According to Genesis chapter 4 verse 11 and Genesis chapter 22 verse 16 to 17. Listen to me. Any person that is walking about that you are seeing is either carrying a blessing or a curse. That is why you have to be careful with the sort of company you are keeping. You know. huh. you, if you have any idea, you the anybody comes and says, follow me, come, come, let's go. Be careful. Look, all of us here, we, we, we have problems. If you want to marry, my advice to those who have not married and who, and who are not yet married, even myself, already I've chosen my problems. You have, to, you have to choose yours. You see, everyone is carrying problems. Too. Heavy problems and cases. Choose the one that you can handle. If you go for a certain lady, you may see her polish the face and smooth and everything. Ah, baby. This one can be my baby. Get into her life. You have married problems. You've not married a human being just like that. You have married cases. And you will be shocked that this person that you, you get into, she has a lot of issues. That little 50,000 you have saved for your entire 20 years, that lady, just two days, can dry everything. You went to marry a woman that already she doesn't even have a place to stay. That means you are going to pay for her rent. You married a woman that had issues with her family. And many more. Are you with me? So be very careful. God told Cain, because of what you have done by killing your brother, I am putting a curse on you. The ground will no longer respond to you anything you want to do with the ground I am cursing you by silencing the ground upon you and Cain was a farmer so he worked with the ground he told the ground so God by that curse means I am ending your career then he told God that ah then God added you also become a wanderer you will never settle at a place. You can never have any place that you can call a home. Then Cain said, Lord, this case is too much. I can't bear. If I roam about, someone can see me and kill me. Then God told Cain, I will put a mark on you. Nobody who sees you will even have a desire to kill you. Nobody who sees you will have a desire to kill you. Are you with me? But if anybody tries to help you to ease the pain that I have put on you and the punishment, seven times of the curse I have put on you will go to that person. Are you here? So there are people that when you engage them, you don't know what has been put upon them spiritually. By even helping them, 
you are rather doubling curses upon you. God said, if anybody tries to help you, so be very discerning. It's not anyone you go about and say, I'm helping. Someone, some people are under the punishment of God. And they need to serve it. Are you with me now? So, the same way God told Abraham, I have blessed you. Your seed. Anyone that blesses you will also be blessed. Anyone that involves himself with you will be blessed. God blessed Abraham. Not Lot. But Lot became blessed because he was related to Abraham. Anything around you that is yours, Abraham, I will bless it because of you. I have put a power on you. Any person you shake hands with, any person you relate, any person who becomes your friend, because of you, I will bless anything around you. Your wife, your children, your friends, any person, as long as you, Abraham, you are involved. Are you with me? That is why there are people that when you get involved with, look, everything begins to get spoiled and damaged in your life. Have you not noticed that? People go through that. Everything was fine up until this person came into your life. Everything was okay up until this person, this friend came in. So be very careful. People are blessings and they are curses. Know the company that you relate with. Now, if a person is a blessing and you relate well, you will be blessed. God said, anyone who blesses you, I will bless you get it? So if a person has that covenant with God, the power of blessing, and you relate well with them, you will also be, be blessed. So the person you are hating, the person that you are despising, do you know that they carry the power of blessings? That is why I said, the person you don't like does not mean God also don't like the person. Are you with me? Treat people well. Love people live at peace with them because you will never know the person you are dealing with how the power of blessings can be transferred from them to you the bible said the moment joseph entered potiphar's house everything in potiphar's house was prospering because of joseph so if potiphar was mistreating joseph God wouldn't have kept his household blessed. Are you with me? The last one. The last one. Men are careers. According to Ezekiel 36 verse 27 and Numbers 11 verse 17. Men are careers. When I talk about careers, we carry things. Are you with me now? God said, I will put my spirit in man. So a man is able to carry something. Are you with me now? So because we are carriers, you need to be careful in how you relate with people. What you are looking for, the next brother is carrying it. Are you with me? What you are looking for, the next brother is carrying it. Upon how you relate with the next brother, Either you receive it or not depends on your relationship with the person. Learn to be at peace with every man because men are careers. That is why God is able to put his spirit upon man. God is able to put his spirit in man. The same way demons and Satan can also put things in man. So men, we can contain things, we can carry things. That is why your heart has the ability to carry a grudge you had with your brother 13 years ago. That thing is still in your heart. Because you, the man, you are a carrier. You can contain things. You can carry things. Just as I can carry. Like this. So can you, your heart, your spirit, carry things like that. So anything that can carry, we put things in it. So upon how you relate with a person, you will never know what they are carrying that might help you. And everyone, one way or the other, is carrying something. Treat me well. And what you may be looking for, upon what I'm carrying, I might, I might deliver them to you. Are you here? This morning, may the Lord empower you. 
any relationship of your life that you need his grace may he grant it to you may you advance from one level of grace to the other in the name of Jesus shall we put our hands together for the Lord amen and amen one minute I want you to pray talk to God three prayer points I want us to pray about pray for the divine wisdom and grace to live with people in a godly way talk to God that Lord grant me the wisdom and the grace to live with people believe me you need wisdom to know how to live with people it's not easy the way you might think it to be if you are not careful all your relationship with people will always be trouble and problems the same people that are meant to be a blessing to you you may never receive blessings from them because of their attitude because of their behaviors because of their nature that is why you will need God's wisdom and grace because you don't have to let what they do cause you to miss all of these blessings God has designed for you ask God, Lord help me give me wisdom to know how to live with people give me wisdom to know how to live well with people in a godly way people are difficult to live with people are difficult to deal with but Lord by your wisdom by your grace I can do it I can do it your word has taught me the spiritual symbolism of what man is I don't want to miss your blessings I don't want to miss your path for me ask God for that and ask God to forgive you for hurting anyone wrongly in your life and in your relationship if you have hurt someone wrongly ask God to forgive you if you have hurt someone wrongly never look beyond it any tear that a person shares because of your hurt it will be used against you that is why you don't have to leave issues unresolved ask God to forgive you and if you also have hurt someone or someone has hurt you ask God to help you to forgive anyone who has wronged you in your relationship with him or her ask God Sometimes someone too has wronged you. You are struggling to forgive the person. You are struggling because of the, pain, the hurt and the pain that they've caused you. I know it is very difficult. But ask God to help you forgive. Let it go. Because of all these things that this morning we have taught. Let it go. Let it go. Release that hurt. Don't let that affect you. The very person who may have even hurt you may still be the person God will use to bless you. Let it go. Ask God to help you forgive any person who has wronged you. Now I want you, the remaining half of the year, pray for God to help you to succeed by directing the steps of your life according to his will from June to December you are to succeed it is not an option we are not negotiating ask God that Lord help me to succeed in the remaining months towards the end of the year we have already crossed half of the months we are left with the second half you cannot be the same you need to succeed. Whatever thing that you couldn't achieve within the first half of the year, the second half, God has to help you. Pray that Lord direct the steps of my life and cause me to succeed. The dreams, the goals that I have according to your will, according to your direction, according to your path. Ask God for divine guidance. The remaining months of the year, ask God to come to your aid to help you speak to God Lord I need to succeed help me to succeed as you direct me my plans my goals 
according to your will according to your will not mine according to your will the bible says when we commit our ways our plans our actions our goals unto god he will direct the steps of our lives are you with me now he will direct the path of our lives god will not direct you but the bible said he will direct the steps we have steps he directs then we have the person that he, he also directs but for you to succeed according to your plans and goals in relation to his will he directs your path not you pray that god direct my path from june to december Whatever you are to achieve in the year 2024, which you have not achieved so far, ask God to help you. 2024, there are blessings God has ordained for you. We have already expanded six months. Don't let this year go by and you carry certain blessings that were meant for you this year into 2025. Ask God, whatever thing that heaven has apportioned for you to receive in 2024. Some of you, 2024 is the year that you have to travel. Some of you, 2024 is the year that you have to marry. Some of you, 2024, according to the plans of God, is the year that you need to build a house. According to God's plan, 2024 is the year that you need to even graduate from school. So don't sit down there. And let the year go by while these things are not yet accomplished. Ask God, whatever thing that is meant for me in 2024, I cannot miss it. I, can, I don't want to carry it into 2025. 2025 has its own blessings as well. Don't double it up. Don't miss it. Speak to God. Speak to God. When you miss, you have missed. 2025 also has what heaven has apportioned for you. God does not do carryover. Amen. There is no carryover. That is why he said each day has its own troubles. You deal with each day at a time. This year, 2024, whatever thing that is in the year for you, ask God that Lord help me achieve it. I don't want to do a carryover to 2025. Whatever heaven has apportioned for me by your power, by your spirit. In the name of Jesus, we have prayed. Lift up your two hands wherever you sit in as I pray for you. Father, by your power, by your spirit, at the sound of my voice, I speak into the lives of your people. That Lord, you will cause their lives to be shining and glorious. I pray you throw your light upon them. Oh, from this season, the middle of the year to the end, Lord, let your glory work wonders in their lives. I pray that Father Lord you will increase testimonies. May they come to a revelation of the power at work in them. I pray oh God that as they have heard your word, empower them. Give them the grace to live according to your word. Lord it is not easy to live at peace with all men. But nothing is impossible with you. What may appear impossible to man, it is possible with you. By your spirit in us, enable us to do according to your word. That we do not miss the blessings you have ordained for us. May our life manifest Christ as we walk about. May our life bring glory to your name. We thank you this day for answered prayer. In Jesus name, amen. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. What are we saying to our Papa? I thought you had a clap offering to that. Amen. Papa, God bless you.